Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Courtney. I have my two standard poodles, Phaedra and Nix, in the room with me, so you may see them running around in the background. Today I'm really excited to be sharing the Urban Decay Kristen Lee Ann collection with you. Now rather than doing live swatches, I've done demos with every single eyeshadow in both of the eyeshadow palettes in this collection. I also demo the blush and the lipsticks. Plus I have a whole bunch of swatch comparisons for you to other eyeshadows. I'm really, really excited with this Kaleidoscope palette because I feel like it's very unique. I don't like the color layout and I know that's something that bothers a lot of other people, but the colors in it are awesome. The color payoff is amazing. And you will see this in the demo, just how amazing they are. So as you can see, the packaging is really cute. It's hard paper, like it feels like it's hardened paper and it's purple and pink and swirly. It says Kristen Leanne on the front. The back of it says Kaleidoscope Dream. When you open it up, there is a mirror inside and it says Stay Gold, which I believe that's one of Kristen Leanne's catchphrases. And then this is the palette. This palette is giving people like OCD nightmares. <laughs> I really like the brush that comes with it. I do want to touch on that because a lot of times brushes are kind of like, eh, they're okay. This one is super soft. It has like this very, very soft blendy side and this nice little smudgy side that's even kind of like a soft smudgy side rather than like a hard smudgy side. So I really like the little brush that comes with it. But the colors, oh my God, the colors are amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and run through my swatches for you. We have Spitfire, which is a bright pink satin with purple shift. We have Stay Gold, which is a metallic yellow gold. We have, we have Tajin, I hope that's how you say it, which is an orange matte. We have LCW, which is a metallic teal blue. We have TRM, which is a metallic deep navy blue. We have Leo, which is a holographic green pearl shift. We have Brixton, which is a holographic red green pearl shift. We have Lime Time, which is a metallic neon green. We have 13th Floor, which is a black matte. We have Dye, which is a fucking amazing violet purple. And we have Corona, which is a gorgeous metallic soft bronze with gold shimmer. So I actually found every single color in this palette, except for Corona, to be very pigmented and easy to work with. I'm not really sure what happened with me when I was trying to apply Corona, but you'll see if you watch the demo that Chroma wasn't as pigmented as I thought it was gonna be. It's a beautiful color, but I ended up having to apply it wet just to get like the intensity that I wanted for the eyeshadow look I have on. So that was a little surprising. So this is the Daydream palette. This is the All Mattes palette. It's kind of like peachy and swirly on the front. <sighs> Inside, when I open it up, it actually gives me Lime Crime vibes, but you have five matte shades. I'm gonna go ahead and run through these five shades for you. We have Lucy, which is an ivory matte. Daydream, which is a soft nude matte. 1212, which is a soft peach matte. Subscribe, which is a warm nude matte. And Eight, which is a rich warm brown matte. All of these colors were excellent and easy to work with. Now, when I went to go look for dupes for this palette, I had to basically pull from the Basquiat Tenant palette, the Electric palette, the 15th Anniversary palette, and several singles. And really, in my opinion, there are only two shades that actually have very, very, very similar colors. Everything else is not really that similar, in my opinion. So first we have Spitfire in 1985. And I feel like Sp uh, Spitfire is lighter, but has better pigmentation than 1985. 1985 seems a little deeper in hue. Then we have Dye and Urban. Again, these are not an exact match. They could be considered similar, much like how Spitfire and 1985 are similar, but I don't really consider them an exact dupe. We have Corona and Smog. As you can tell, these are really nothing alike at all. Now for Stay Gold, I thought I had a dupe, but I don't. <laughs> I swatched Honey and Blitz, and really, to me, neither one of those is an exact dupe for Stay Gold. For LCW, I tried several different teals that I have from Urban Decay. The only one that was close is Hate, but again, it's not exact. For TRM, I tried Evidence and Untitled, and Untitled is closer to TRM, but still not exact, different finish. Evidence really wasn't close at all. For Lime Time, I did find Exu, which is from the Basquiat Tenet palette, and I felt like these were very, very close, but still, like, like I would put them at like a 95 to 98% match. Oh, and I forgot, I went back to one of the Wizard of Oz palettes to try to find a dupe for Leo. This is Leo and Jealous, the right half of the Jealous split eyeshadow. And as you can see, they're not alike. They're not really alike at all. They're, they're both just in the green family, but they're not identical. And last we have Tajin, the orange matte and Spike. I feel like these are pretty close. Like, I feel like I really have to peer at them to see a difference between the two. 
Oh, and I didn't bother to look for a black mat because I figured black mat, you know, everybody's going to have a bunch of black mats in their collection. So the only two colors in this palette that I felt were extremely similar to other colors were Tajin, which is similar to the permanent eyeshadow single spike, and Lime Time, which is similar to the uh, color from the Urban Decay Basquiat Tenet Palette Exu. Really, it's not that similar to anything else at all. I don't feel like you could buy just one palette and have all of these colors. Now, maybe if you had all of the, if you had the 15th anniversary and the electric palette and the tenant palette, um, you might be able to put together something, something similar, sure. But honestly, I love all of the colors in this palette except for Tajin. That's just because I'm not into orange. But these are my kind of colors. I really like the color payoff. You can see when I'm doing, um, when I'm using all of the colors in the demo, you can see that they're just so easy to work with and to blend. I put together three different looks and had so much fun doing it. I didn't bother to look for dupes for the matte palette just because I figure Urban Decay already has so many like matte neutral palettes. You've got Naked One, Naked Two, Naked Ultimate Basics that, you know, I just, I didn't see the point. Like, I'm sure that there are similar colors in all of those palettes. So next is the Beauty Beam palette. This is the cheek palette. It's three highlighters. I really like the packaging because it's like this sort of holographic hot pink packaging. You can see it here. It's really pretty. So when you open it up, you have this rose gold pearl, this white gold pearl, and then this warm golden pearl. For the look I have on, I demoed putting on the rose gold and the white gold to sort of sculpt my cheeks. I am gonna go ahead and swatch the colors in the back of my hand for you. So this is the rose gold color right there. There's the white gold color. It's a very natural highlight on my skin tone. And there's the golden pearl. It's actually very pretty. And since a couple of you asked, let me go ahead and swatch Sin next to these colors. So Sin is at the bottom. It's most similar to the middle shade. If you're really into highlighters, you probably want this palette. I think the quality is there. It's just not shades that I personally would reach for and wear very often. So I couldn't see buying it for myself. Next we have the lipsticks. So I did go ahead and put all three of these on my lips for you in the demo part of this video, but I'm gonna swatch these on the back of my hand. This is Bun Bun. And I'm just gonna do one pass with each color. Bun Bun is a great nude. I really like it with the ex-girlfriend pencil that I used it with in the video, or in the demo. It's really smooth, it's really pigmented. Cloud Nine is my favorite of the three because it's basically like a magenta purpley color. It's also very pigmented in one pass, very creamy. Then we have our problem child, Spellbound. I really love this color, but this color is patchy as fuck if you use it on its own. So I'm gonna do one swipe so you can see what I mean on the back of my hand. As you can see, it's kind of patchy. So all I did to fix that patchiness was use a lip pencil, and I prefer using Urban Decay's Spellbound lip pencil with it. You guys had requested that I swatched Urban Decay's Pandemonium lipstick next to Cloud9. That's Pandemonium, that's Cloud9. I do think they're pretty similar, especially when you swatch them and I wasn't expecting them to be. I'm pretty certain if you own Pandemonium that you could create Cloud9 by using a pink or lip pencil underneath. However, I will say that between the two, Cloud9 has a much better texture and formula because it's more creamy, whereas Pandemonium, Pandemonium is a stiffer formula. I do wanna talk about the packaging. I like that they have this almost holographic hot pink for the lid. And then when you open it up, you can see that it has like this little heart and Kristen Leanne on the inside of the bullet. It's just, it's really cute. There are like four other pieces in the collection that I don't have that I wanna go ahead and touch on really fast. There's a Vice Liquid Lipstick Duo, which is Forgive and Forget. One color in that is a pinky mauve nude. The other color is like a coral nude. There's a single Vice Liquid Lipstick, which is called Pulse. Basically, I guess it's named after jellyfish. It's like a cool gray. I bought that one, but it's not here yet. And then there's a single eyeshadow, which is SGH. And I also bought, bought that, but it's not here yet. It's like a mustard yellow with a tonal floating pearl. So basically it will effectively be a matte. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the demo section of this video. And then at the end of my video, I'm gonna have my thoughts on the entire collection for you. I'm gonna try Daydream as my transition shade.
I would say the shade has pretty good pigmentation and it's pretty easy to blend out. I'm gonna use dye, which is the deep violet purple. I'm gonna pack this on the inner and outer lid. bridge this here and then blend it up with a different brush. Actually, I'm just going to use this brush to kind of soften that purple and move it around. I feel like the purple colored dye is badass. It's an amazing purple. You know I love purples too, so I'm thrilled that there's an excellent purple in this palette. I'm gonna use that same brush and pat Spitfire onto the center of my lid. Just sort of like an impromptu halo, halo eye. I need a slightly smaller brush so I can kind of blend the purple, the purple shade dye and the crease just a little bit more. So I'm using a Sigma E25 and just kind of rounding that shape. Oh god, this is such a great purple. Yes, more like this Urban Decay, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and put that purple at my lower lid. And then I'm gonna put the pink color at the center. The lower lid too, so it just kind of like, has that feel more like a halo eye. And I'm going to bring down that transition color along the lower lid to blend out the edges. And I'm just using that color Daydream along the lower lid, bl blending out these edges. I'm using the matte shade Lucy just along my brow bone. That's a really good matte. I know my brows aren't done because I'm going to wait and do those at my, I guess, final look. My final form. Since we're just basically demoing these two eyeshadow palettes to test them out. Um, let me highlight. I think I'm gonna highlight with Brixton. Let me get a small highlighter brush to do that inner corner. And then, do I have a Q-tip that I can use? Yeah, I'll just use this Q-tip to kind of smudge that down. I know I have fallout on my face, so let me clean that shit up. All right, so this halo eye was really easy to put together with the palette. Quick and simple just to show you how the colors worked. Okay, my camera shut off. I'm not really sure why it's plugged in, but I started off with subscribe as the warm nude that I use for my transition. I'm gonna pick up lime time for my next color. And I'm patting this on the inner one third of my lid. Taking LCW next, which is apparently named after Christian's favorite song. And I'm gonna pat TRM, which is named after Kristen's husband, on the outer lid. And then I'm gonna go back and blend those colors, but they're all extremely pigmented. As you can probably see. Blending the edges of the two blue shades. And I'm going to blend the edges of the green and blue. 
There's a little bit of fallout, but that's because I didn't tap off my brush. I'm going to run some of this blue into the crease. And then pick up a little bit more of the deeper blue for the outer crease. I guess like this tropical look, I think I'm going to use the gold shade, it's the gold shade here, the outer lower lid, pop the left half of the split shade, which is called Leo, onto the inner lower lid. black shade 13 floor I mean although it's a matte black so I'm just using it to deepen the outer area a little bit seems to blend out pretty nicely You look at this look up close. All right, so here's my second look playing around. It's kind of tropical. I feel like the colors are very vibrant and blended without any issues. I'm super impressed. All right, so I left the colors that are the hardest for me to work with for last. I'm gonna start with Lucy. And basically I just am trying to put Lucy under my brow since it's a nice matte color and I'll work my way down. All right, I'm gonna use 1212, which is Kristen Leanne's birthday. I'm going super soft with this color because it's kind of like an orangey coral color. Honestly, I'm loving how this blends out. I've loved every single color in these two palettes. I'm gonna put Taijin at the outer lower lid here and the outer corner of the lid. Okay, now I'm gonna take 12-12 and do the lower lid and then blend it in with Taijin, or however you say that, to connect the color to the outer crease. Look at me, using orange, now I'm going to put Corona on my lid. I'm actually really excited about this color because I think it's super gorgeous. It is not going on as intense as I thought it would. Um, which is a little strange considering how nicely it's swatched. So I'm gonna spray my brush with a little bit of Urban Decay's All Nighter. And then, oh yeah, there we go. Could be that I had too much setting powder on my lid from setting my uh, primer. I mean, this color swatch, like it was just amazing. It had sick pigmentation, so I was kind of surprised. I'm gonna go for eight, which is a warm brown for my outer V right here. I kind of stick this brush into the socket of my eye. So I have hooded eyes and it helps me figure out where the accent color should go. And 
I'm kind of dragging that color eight onto the outer corner of my lid too. I'm getting a lot of fallout, but that's because I haven't been tapping off my brush, so that's totally on me. Grabbing a little bit of 1212 and just bringing the transition color higher so you can see it when my eyes are open because I have hooded eyes, and if I don't, sometimes the color isn't high enough. I think I'm gonna use a tiny little bit of 13th floor, the black. Just a teeny tiny bit. I'm just kind of patting it in because I'm gonna go blend it in a second. All right, I'm gonna put on the rest of my makeup and then I'll be back. All right, so here's lip one. This is Bun Bun. I used Urban Decay's ex-girlfriend pencil with it. I put on Cloud Nine with Bittersweet pencil. This is my favorite lipstick from the collection. This third color is Spellbound. I used her Urban Decay's Hex Pencil and line to completely filled in my lips. Then I put Spellbound on top because this color swatched patchy. I really love how it looks, but I would not recommend buying this color or using this color unless you're gonna use it with a pencil because it, it is patchy. As you know, Hex is one of my all-time favorite pencils from Urban Decay, as you can tell, because I don't have much left. And if you haven't already, you should go enter my awesome giveaway because I'm giving away all of my favorite Urban Decay lipsticks and some of the lip pencils. So for the rest of my makeup, I put on Becca's First Light Primer. I mixed by Eden Minerals Nordic Veil Foundation in the shade Yorin with Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. I set my foundation with Laura Geller Balance and Brighten in Porcelain. I put on ColourPop's Aphrodisiac Blush. And now we're gonna play with the cheek palette. I'm gonna use the rose gold shade right here as sort of a blush topper. basically blending this with the top of my blush. I'm gonna highlight with the white gold right here in the center. Also gonna highlight right under the brows with this white gold shade. look. All right, so now that I've had a chance to use every single item in the collection, let me talk to you about it. For the highlighter palette, which I believe is beautiful, I really like the packaging, I think it's really cute, it's lightweight, it's slim, perfect for travel. I think that if you are a highlighter junkie, you're gonna want this because the formula is excellent. If you have pale skin like I do, you can use the middle shade right here as a highlight, like a subtle highlight in my opinion. And then you can use the rose gold or the warm golden shade here as sort of like a blush topper which is kind of what I did. I've been doing that whole Bailey B thing where you use two different highlighters to sculpt your cheek. I'm gonna put a link to her video so you can check that out. But as you can see, I use the rose gold here to blend in with my blush and then the, the white gold highlight up here. It makes my cheeks look nice. So if you have pale skin like I, I do, never fear, you can actually use this palette if you like to use it exactly as I just described. <laughs> I personally would not buy this palette for me just because I don't wear these shades very often, so I wouldn't really get much use out of it. But I think it's excellent quality, and if you like these warm golden highlights, you're probably gonna love it. Now, when it comes to the lipstick colors, which I have in the back of my hand, I would probably buy all three just because I love Urban Decay's Vice lipsticks. I've bought so many of their lipsticks. Um, that's why I'm having a giveaway with their lipsticks. I really like the formula. As I mentioned in the demo and um, before when I was showing you these swatches, that Bun Bun has excellent formula, Cloud Nine has excellent formula, but Spellbound is a problem child. So if you don't like wearing lip pencils, you will not want Spellbound and you should skip it. I personally wear lip pencils with every single lipstick I put on, so I don't have a problem with that. That doesn't bother me, but I understand that that's a problem for some people. I really do think that Cloud Nine is similar to Bittersweet or to uh, Pandemonium, but I feel like Cloud Nine has a much better formula than Pandemonium. So if you already own Pandemonium, you may want to skip Cloud Nine. Just depends. Somebody asked me how Bun Bun compared to Fuel, and I should have done this earlier. 
but I feel like Bun Bun is a cooler version of, full, of Fuel because Fuel just looks so like orange in comparison. So I think that if you own Fuel and you wear nudes, you would probably still find Bun Bun to be different enough that you would want both. Now this is the Daydream palette and it's the matte nudes palette. Um, I think the formula is excellent. All five of these colors were very easy to work with. Again, I really like the slim packaging. The brush that came with this one is not as nice as the brush that's in the Kaleidoscope palette. I personally would not buy this for me because I already have a ton of matte warm neutrals. I don't really need more matte warm neutrals, but I think that if you wear matte warm neutrals all the time, you may want this. You may want it for travel because it's a very slim size. I mean, it fits into my small makeup bag, so I'm, I think it's great for that, which is probably what I'll do. I'll probably keep it for travel. Yeah, for me personally, it's just not something I would run out and buy because it's matte warm neutrals and I have a ton. But if you love them, you should get it. Now, my favorite piece from the entire collection is the Kaleidoscope palette. I love this palette. I like the packaging. Um, again, it's like really sleek. It's easy to pack for travel. I love all of the colors in it. You're able to create a ton of different looks with this. Like if you look at the demo, I put together just three looks really quick and I can already think of like, I don't know, 10 more different looks that I could do with this palette. So I really like that it gets my creative juices flowing. Um, I don't like the layout. I really don't, but I'm going to, you know, live with it. I think it's okay. I, I can, I can survive the layout for having then really nice high quality eyeshadows. I think if you're somebody who loves color like me, you need this palette. Um, if you don't like wearing color, skip it because you'll never get any use out of it. You'll just look at it and be like, oh, it's so pretty. Or, oh my God, I can't stand the layout. It's driving me crazy. Why did I buy this? That's my feeling on the Urban Decay Kristen Leanne collection. What are your thoughts? Please be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video and found it entertaining and helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share. I love it when you share my videos. It really helps me out. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that little subscribe button down below and I'll see you in my next video.